This is a list of the top AFL players for disposals, an extremely talented list that we have here. All of them were prolific ball winners in their junior careers. Nick Dacos was exceptional as a junior player. He averaged more than 35 disposals in his top age year for Oakley Chargers. Of course, finding the football is only a very small part of the puzzle, with recruiters looking for all different types of phases of the game, different statistics to build the draft profiles, but I thought it'd be a little bit of fun just to look at last year's top five disposal getters and this year, just kind of compare them and see what types of players we have and that sort of thing. So let's get into that now. We will start with 2023 players and the number two pick in the national draft was Colby McKercher. He was the number one player in the Coates League for disposals. He averaged 31.2, a staggering amount, um, you know, as an average for the season from his seven games. He averaged 1.1 goal a game too, so he was able to hit the scoreboard as well as just accumulating those disposals. McKercher has that um, that real breakaway speed as well from the middle of the ground, so there was a lot of you know highlights, clips of him tearing away from the clearance last year, which is so important, um, getting that first handball received, but he was also able to win plenty of contested possession as well, and just his ball use is, is so elite. He's kind of got that golden Nick Dacos type ball use as well, so recruiters obviously looking with Colby and why he went so high in the draft, that, that complete picture wasn't just an accumulator and had plenty of weapons to hurt you outside the disposals. Number two on the list was Riley Sanders. He played for the Sandringham Dragons, but originally it was from Tasmania over in Victoria Boarding. He went at 30.5 disposals per game in his nine games for the Dragons. One of the key statistics on Sanders was that he never went below 25 disposals in a game, so such a consistent player. Um, and just one that he was probably considered in that draft as kind of the best pure midfielder, a midfielder that can get from contest to contest, kind of play the areas between the arcs. He's not a particularly prolific scorer. He went at 0.6 goals per game, so he didn't hit the scoreboard a lot. Um, and less of an offensive midfielder, I would say, and more of a, um, you still want the ball in his hands for sure. Like he's a good user and that kind of thing, but um, almost like a box-to-box -box midfielder in soccer, if you want to call it that. He was kind of known for his ball-winning ability, his clearance, and we've seen that at AFL level playing for the Western Bulldogs when he has played this year, and also his balance and just high footy IQ. So kind of that just best, I suppose, pure footballer is a way to describe Riley Sanders and someone that didn't particularly have any major attributes but was just good at footy. So the first two players on that list were top 10 draft picks, so the disposals really matched their position in the chain. The next one is George Stevens. So he went at pick number 58 to the Geelong Cats. Sort of an athletic, uh, versatile sort of defensive midfielder at 189 centimetres. He can play behind the ball and also go into the midfield, but not a player that you particularly wanted the ball in his hands. And one of the knocks on Stevens was lacking the hurt factor from his 29.2 disposals per game that he averaged. Wasn't someone that particularly got involved in the offensive phases of the play. He only averaged 0.3 goals per game. So not a scorer. And again, someone that um, Geelong probably saw as a bit of a project player that could kind of um, you know help them in certain phases of the game, like a, a big bodied midfielder that could do a defensive job, kind of sit in behind the ball as well. Um, a horses for courses type player, very versatile. But yeah, probably the first one that kind of bucks the trend of it being a, a superstar kind of player in the high disposal category. Number four, and this is our first player that didn't actually get picked up in the 2023 draft. It's Christian Ferranata, a 184 centimeter mid who averaged 28.2 disposals per game from his 11 games. He even hit the scoreboard a little bit, 0.6, so he was on par with a, a Riley Sanders type midfielder. Um, certainly someone that could accumulate the football and came from a basketball background. So um, it's interesting that he wasn't sort of able to, he was still able to kind of win the ball, but he wasn't seen as a, a future prospect with that kind of other sporting background. And all the knocks on Ferranata was that he just doesn't really hurt you with the footy. So he was able to get in there, win contest, um, win clearance, win plenty of the football, but just didn't really hurt you going forward. But, you know, we have seen players like that in the past get drafted. So it was probably a little bit of a surprise that someone that could average 28.2 disposals didn't get drafted, but 
there you go. And there usually is one in that top five that, that doesn't end up making it. Number five, and it rounds out the third Tasmanian. He was picked up in the 60s, I think, in the end by St Kilda, Ari Schoenmaker. He played seven Coates Talent League games for the Tassie Devils. He averaged 27.9 disposals. And he was a bit of a phenomenon. He sort of come on the scene. He was talked about as a top 10, a top 20 type draft pick as a you know, a tall halfback that could probably run through the middle eventually, but um, ended up really sliding. I think there were some behavioral issues uh, involved throughout the season, which may have made him slip, which is a little bit odd. Um, 0.4 goals per game, so he wasn't a prolific scorer, but obviously that's the halfback role coming in there, and he was more on the, the sort of ball movement um, and counterattacks for the team. Um, yeah, as I said, 194 centimetres, so has a really nice athletic profile and, like I said, someone that could play through the midfield at that 194 centimetres. So um, has that sort of booming kickoff half back. People have said that he kicked goals from 70 metres out. You know, you can hit a pass from 70 metres. So apart from the disposals as well and being able to read the game from half back, he also had some, you know, really high-end footy attributes like the kicking, which does help. And, yeah, surprising that, I guess there was two, we started off in this list with two players being inside the top 10 and it was kind of on track with the disposal, but then some of these three, four and five players who averaged a lot of the footy, but just didn't really, um, you know, make it in the draft. It's, it's really interesting. The next thing that we'll do now is move on to the top five from this year. We're obviously kind of a bit over halfway through the Coates Talent League season. So we'll kind of have an audit here on how players are doing this year and where they sit in the draft picture. Now, the number one player for disposals in the Coats League this year is Jagger Smith. Now, he's a really sort of becoming like a polarizing type player in this year's draft. He's been touted as going as high as number one at certain times, but with the amount of football that he wins, there is probably an issue around his hurt factor, although he does possess some really high end qualities around certain parts of the game, particularly the clearance phase. He has ridiculous speed and agility around the contest that are um, eye-catching when you're watching him. His stoppage navigation is brilliant. He averages 34.7 disposals, a season high of 50 disposals in a game against the Western Jets, and a season low of 28 disposals. So consistency just unbelievable and ceiling absolutely unbelievable as well. He averages 19.3 kicks and 15.4 handballs, which is actually a little bit surprising for me because games that I've seen him in, it's definitely been more on the handball side. He's more that first hands player getting it out to other ones. He sort of um, zips in and out with his movement um, in the contest and then kind of, you know, relieves with a, a handball out to space, out to the winger, that sort of thing. He's only kicked one goal three for the season, and, and this is probably the part where you, you look at the hurt factor. He doesn't really score, not a big score involvement player or a big um, scorer himself. So I think that's the phase of, of Jagger's game that um, is probably hurting him the most at the moment and making him slip down that draft board. I still do think he's going to be a top you know, top five, top 10 pick, but it may not be as high as sort of one or two that it was looking a few months back. Unless I think he can sort of, um, you know, work on a few areas of his game, work on that ball use inside forward 50 and really like driving forward, going for that kind of more direct play where he can, where he can hit the scoreboard a little bit more. He's a really interesting prospect at the moment and he almost could be one that comes down to a team specific game style type thing. You know, if a, if a club thinks they're going to be with a coach that plays a really heavy clearance style game and you want that sort of zip around the contest, I think he's definitely someone that you'd want to go for with a high end pick, but maybe... I don't know, maybe if you're playing that more transition football off the back half, you may be a player that you stay clear of. But then again, I do think some of those things that he's been criticized for aren't really things that are fundamentally wrong with him and he could actually be able to work on anyway with the future. But we'll move on to number two on the list. So we've got a list of players here in Taj Stanley, um, who's with the Northern Territory Academy side, Taj Hotton from Sandringham, Ned Hawkins from Sandringham, and Daniel Annabel, uh who I think is with GWS, Daniel Annabelle. He's an underager, but they've all played less than five games, which I've kind of made as a cutoff here for, for players. So if you haven't played over five games, I haven't included you. Number two for the players that have played enough games is Zach Johnson from the Northern Knights. He is averaging 27.6 disposals, a season low of 17 and a season high of 33 disposals. So pretty consistent there. Um, not hitting the highs of a Jagger Smith, obviously, with 50, but has absolutely no problems finding the ball, does Zach Johnson. He's a 185 centimetre, kind of hybrid mid-half-back type player. 
He's the captain of the Northern Knights and he's a real sort of orchestrator from the, with them for, um, from half back. So he gives the team a lot of control, seems to know when to sort of go fast, when to go slow with his ball movement. I wouldn't call him an above average sort of elite kick, but um, makes really good decisions with the ball, especially off half back when they're kind of just trying to get that ball movement going or you know trying to get a foothold in the game, that sort of thing. Equally, he's able to kind of go into stoppage and, and win clearances and stuff like that. And again, I wouldn't call him an elite, elite clearance player either, but ticks a lot of boxes in that area. He's a good size, good marking player too for his height as well. So someone that has, I think, quite a bit of upside, but maybe if there was like one sort of knock on Zach Johnson, it would just be not being particularly good at one thing. He's sort of a very, very well-rounded player. Um, 17 kicks, 10 handballs per game and four goals, three for the season. So even as a halfback slash midfielder, he's sort of able to hit the scoreboard as well, push forward, take a grab and um, kick some goals. Obviously, comparing him up against a pure mid like Jagger Smith um, has a couple of extra goals on him even. So not a huge scoring player, but um, someone that can also do that and go forward. Draft range for Zach Johnson, it's probably looking somewhere between pick 15 and, and 40, somewhere in that range. I know that's a, quite a big range, but it's really hard to say with a player like him. I think his uh, when he plays his first game for Vic Metro, gets into that national championships, that'll kind of give us a, a better picture on where he is up against that sort of elite, elite talent at the top end. Next up is Levi Ashcroft, but again, he hasn't played that uh, number of games to qualify. So we'll skip to number three, which is Josh Smiley. We kind of all know where he sits in the draft pickings. He seems the clear number one at this stage. Had another really um, you know, damaging game in the national championships in game one. 194 centimeter midfielder. So Rather than just the ball winning with Josh, it's um, those that athletic profile that kind of accompanies that that is the really big thing. He's averaging 27 disposals at Coates League level, so massive for a player that generally plays either in the midfield or forward of centre. Um, some ridiculous games this year, a season-high 34 disposals and three games against the Brisbane Lions Academy. His season low was 14 touches, but um, still managed a couple of goals, I think, in that game against the Tassie Devils. 15 kicks, 11 handballs, and he's kicked 11 goals, three for the season. So a very um, proficient player offensively as well. He's able to go forward and just sort of stick that frame and be a real target man for whoever he's playing for. What Smiley's kind of been known for over the last couple of years, it's power, it's stoppage craft, and it's the versatility. He's even played a little bit at half back at times, playing for the AFL Academy side as well. Uh, just looks the clear number one at this stage with a, a balance of, you know, being able to win the ball, sort of that natural footballing ability of, you know, picking up disposals, knowing where to be, and then also having a, an athletic profile to boot, something that, you know, players like uh, Jagger Smith, who's only around 180 centimetres, doesn't have that sort of athletic profile to go with uh, the footy smarts that he possesses. But number four on the list is Cooper Hines from the Dandenong Stingrays, who is averaging 26.5 disposals from his eight games this season. Hines is a 190 centimetre mid. He's played a bit of footy with Vic Country this season, uh, as well as the Stingrays. Really known for his versatility with that, that 190 centimetre frame. He's able to go through the midfield, be a bit of a, an enforcer, a good stoppage player. Um, he's played a little bit at half back, I think, and then mostly the other um, position has been forward. He can sort of rest forward and be a bit of a target man at that size. And he's kicked a staggering 14 goals, eight to go with that 26.5 disposal. So he's really been sneaky good this season. Haven't heard a lot of talk about this guy. Um, his draft range is really, really interesting. Kind of someone that's been talked about in that top 20, but also a player that I think recruiters have sort of said could slip outside the draft at all and he not even get drafted at all so he kind of sits in that real interesting no man's land kind of area but I think if he can um, elevate himself in these national championships he had a pretty um, a pretty good game in, in game one of the national championships against South Australia without being um, brilliant had about 20 touches I think so if he, he can insert himself onto those national championships games I think that'll go a long way um, because he's, he's certainly stacking up statistically so far. So that'll go a long way to help him in, get into that sort of top 20, top 30 in the draft. And the last one on the list at number five is Xavier Lindsay from the Gippsland Power. 183 centimetre, kind of midfield, half back, wing. Again, um, that topic, that, that sort of theme of being very versatile. 26.2 disposals, 
a season high of 32 against GWV. I was at that game and he played a pure mid role, so uh, not surprising that that was one of his bigger games. A season low of 20 disposals, so plays a bit on the wing as well where it can be. You can get a bit lost out there on the wing at times, not as easy to um, you know get the little handballs out and stuff like that. 16.2 kicks to 10 handballs, so he's definitely more of a kicker, this guy, and you do want him kicking. He's a beautiful kick of the footy. He's kicked two goals, four for the season, so hasn't been a prolific goal scorer, but he is a guy that gets involved in the score. So a lot of his chains, um, particularly, you know, receiving from halfback and kind of setting up those longer form chains, he's really good at with his ball use. Um, and just some of the things that have been talked about here with him is just the, the speed factor, the X factor, his beautiful disposal, um, as I said, gets part of those ball movement chains and that sort of thing. So he has a little bit of the Colby McCurches about him, this guy, I think. Um, you know, similar size, similar running power. Maybe not quite as good a ball use as Colby McCurcher, but kind of sits in that bracket. 26.2 disposals, so definitely someone that wins plenty of the ball. And the versatility that he has being able to go to the outside and the inside really does help. So that is a wrap for my stats audit, particularly here on disposals. Kind of why I'm putting this together is I sort of want to follow it throughout the season. We'll check in again at the end of the Coach Talent League final series and see what's changed. I think it's really interesting just to see, um, you know, have a look at the end of the year too, where they sit in the draft picture, these players. You know, is it possible to to get drafted and not win much of the ball? Is it possible to get a heap of the ball and, and then not get drafted as well? So um, it will be interesting to see if all of these top five players at the end of the season do end up finding their way onto an AFL list. That's all I've got time for today. I'm going to do plenty more of these videos um, for other stats like goal kicking and contested possession and those kind of things. So stay posted. This is number one and I'll see you guys next time.